Hello and welcome back to Escaping Kerbin in the mini-series we're calling Minmus Missions Mithap. So in the last episode we built this behemoth that you see before us and in this episode we are going to rendezvous that with the rest of our kerbals on the surface of Minmus. So let's get started. It's a heavy craft with a lot of parts. It takes a little bit to, to raise up into the air. Suffer a few frame drops at the beginning. Look at those engine plumes. Gorgeous. This is probably the biggest craft we've uh, sent up into space in this series. I'm trying to think back. I don't think uh, we've made anything bigger than this. I think this is the largest. So it's uh, imp it's always impressive to see them going going up instead of just falling over and exploding. So we don't have any clouds above us. We can't uh, pierce through the, the cloud layer, but we're definitely flying past it. So joining us on this mission is we have one pilot and one scientist. The uh, scientist that's already on the surface of Minmus is going to be joining this scientist in the mobile processing lab. And they're going to be doing a whole bunch of science on the surface. Uh, they're going to be staying in this for a while, which is why it has so much life support. We want them to be nice and comfortable and happy for the next several years while they get us all that tasty science. A little dangerous as we separate our side boosters and they tap us. But thankfully, uh, nothing exploded. I was glad that we uh, didn't end up needing a fairing. Um, in the last episode, we weren't able to get one around this thing, so we just decided to send it anyways. Hopefully, the aerodynamics of it was enough, and it looks like it was. So now we're going to go ahead and circularize our burn around the planet. It's a heavy craft. It's going to take a lot of force. And uh, I'm really glad that we took the time to put those extra side boosters on the main body of the craft. The ones that are going to be taking over when this rocket engine uh, runs out of fuel. Because if we were to try to finish the circularization of our burn with the nuclear power alone, I don't think we would have had the thrust to weight ratio. So we say goodbye to our lower stage. in true Kerbal fashion. And there we have it. We are now in orbit. So of course the next step is to change our inclination to match that of Minmus. And there was barely any fuel left in them, um, but we might as well utilize as much as we can. And 
Now we're on to the nuclear engines. And they are very efficient. They will get us everywhere we need to go and possibly more. So we get a nice little shot of the sunset against our craft. Gorgeous orange hue. And then it's gone. So now it's time to get ourselves out to Minmus. I went ahead and put the maneuver on the wrong side because I was looking at the map upside down. Never a good idea to do that. And then I have some problems with my encounter. I was uh, looking at the satellite that is orbiting the whole of Kerbin, that's that far one out there, and that is uh, actually searching the skies for other celestial bodies, and hopefully it'll come back with some information soon. I'd like to see what else is out there. So we did a quick little test of our science to see if we could put some science into the mobile processing lab, but we don't have any Kerbals in there, so we weren't able to store anything. And here we are, getting ready to do our transfer burn. And by getting ready, of course, I mean actually doing it. <laughs> But uh, this is going to be quite a lengthy burn. Uh, about midway through, we decide that we're going to need to take some action to not make it the least efficient route possible. So I'm going to fast forward time a little bit until a little bit later into the burn. So you can see here, we have more than half of our burn already completed. But we're kind of pretty far past our maneuver node, so we're starting to lose efficiency pretty quickly. So I go and I kill the maneuver in the flight computer. Just go ahead and stop it. And then at our periapsis once more, I plot our second part of our maneuver. And we're just going to come around and hit it again. You kind of have to do some improvisation when it comes to nuclear engines. You gotta really figure out the best way to utilize them. So we go ahead and focus on Minimus to check our periapsis and it looks good. So we're just gonna go ahead and send it on over. In the last episode, or maybe the episode before that, I mentioned that it only takes about six to seven days to get to Minmus. Uh, I was wrong on that. I, it actually takes about 12 to 14. Um, I think I might have been thinking of what it takes to get to the Mun and back. But, yeah, for Minmus, sometimes it's, it's 15 whole days just to, to make our maneuvers, so... But we have years and years worth of life support, so we're not concerned. What will be concerning, though, is the mod that we have called Dang It, and that causes certain parts to fail, which is why our lander failed was uh, our fuel tank popped a hole in it. We lost all of our fuel, and any fuel that we went to put into the craft would just dissipate out into the air, or into the vacuum of space, so... We do have to be cautious about our parts failing. So here we are, burning off the uh, second half, or even like the second, 
What would that be? Three fifths? One fifth? Two fifths? The last two fifths of our burn? I don't use physics warp for this. Um, I don't exactly trust it. I feel I would much rather just sit here for five minutes and look at something else, you know, figure something else out while I'm waiting for the burn to finish instead of trying to just get it done as fast as possible. I feel like some funky things happen when you jump into physics warp and uh, sometimes it's not worth it to lose the mission over that. You can just wait. So as you can see, our apolapsis is extending farther and farther out. And then the flight computer slows down our approach as we get closer. And with any luck, it didn't overshoot. Normally it ends up overshooting, we have to flip around and turn around, but not this time. We can just slowly ease our way in with uh, the use of holding down control and tapping shift. It's the best way to just kind of ease your rocket. Because by holding down control, you keep it from actually raising, and so when you tap it, it automatically goes back down to zero. A little handy trick. So here we are, coming up on Minmus. Beautiful green planet. Not made of mint ice cream. We've uh, we've proven that now. And now we start our capture burn. It was uh, quite a long burn, but easily manageable. We didn't run the risk of escaping. It's very nice. I don't like, I don't use nuclear power very often. So I was, I was very happy with how this mission has been coming out. So now I just have them circle around the body several times until the rest of the Kerbals that we're going to be meeting up with come into the light side. No, no need to land in the dark if we don't have to. So now I'm changing the inclination so that I can come above the Kerbals. Because the way that it's set right now we weren't going to. So looking at our fuel, we have over half of what we what we started with. Um, so I think we're going to have more than enough fuel to handle landing, uh, as long as we don't flip around too much or have to uh, re-land several times. We should be fine. And this this ship isn't planning like there's no plan to bring this mobile processing lab back to Kerbin. Uh, we don't have any heat shields on it. We don't have any parachutes on it. We got a parachute on our escape craft, but that's for the Kerbals to come home with. So there we are. There's our flats. Now this beeping starts to happen, and I'm not exactly sure what's going on. I'm going to stop the beeping right now. So I'm flipping around to the different cameras. I'm trying to get into the first person view because I'm assuming that the beeping is because of our warning systems that are in place here. So the ground proximity warning is off. All of our warnings are off and I'm trying to figure out what it is that happens. Uh, turns out that our escape craft, the one that is on top right there that's meant to take our Kerbal's home, that too has sprung a leak in the uh, in the tanks. So, yeah. 
There's a, there's our first mishap for the episode. Um, yeah, that escape craft on the very top is now useless. Uh, it's not going to be able to get us home. Even if we were to fill the fuel into it, uh, the fuel would just leak out. And by the time we got off the surface of Minmus and up into the atmosphere, we would have... Er, out, Oh, not the atmosphere, excuse me. Just into the, the sphere of influence of it by the time we got off the surface, we would have run out of liquid fuel and oxidizer. So we're going to have to think of something else. But before we can do that, we need to bring this, uh, this behemoth down. So we use our trajectories mod and we just kind of eyeball the different positions that we need to fire in to get them to land correctly. So, if you can see that little red icon there. Now we uh, set the other kerbals as our target. It'll help us land a little bit easier. So the red target to the left by our engines, that's our trajectory. That's where we're going to be landing. And the little yellow numbers there to the right by our solar panel, that's where we need to go. But, uh... One of the things I was planning for these kind of uh, maneuver adjustments, because when we did the test flight back in the last episode, we realized that we wouldn't be able to land the way that we normally do, which is you know coming in at an angle and killing all of our horizontal and vertical speed all at once uh, with a suicide burn. We weren't able to do that with these engines. It's just too heavy, and they're not strong enough. So we went to this mission with the plan of just killing our horizontal velocity at a high altitude and then killing our vertical velocity as we descended. But as you can see here, we still have some horizontal velocity. So we go ahead and get our landing information up from Flight Engineer, or Mechjeb? I think it's Mechjeb. Excuse me. We get our Mechjeb landing information ready. That's going to tell us our suicide bird countdown, which is the very, very last minute that we can burn. I don't like waiting till that very last second to hit it because oftentimes there's a, a momentary lapse between when the engines get turned on and when they actually fire. And that momentary lapse is enough to just completely destroy everything. So... I always try to burn just slightly before that. As you can see, we're coming down. We're fairly close. Let's go ahead and turn off trajectories, but I don't think I needed to. I, I could have just left it on. It would have been fine. It's quite peaceful landing on a, a moon not having to deal with reheating or re-entry heating effects so now I'm starting to worry a little bit we're not landing as close as I wanted and we still are coming down fairly quickly and this thing is a boat to try to turn around it has two extra large reaction wheels on it and it's still it's just so hard to tip I'm starting to get very nervous. We're coming close to our suicide burn countdown. So I just try to turn myself over. I don't like the fact that we're coming in at an angle and then I start pushing a little too far. So now what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to just ease my retrograde marker over to be on the center so we can just come straight down. But we're still coming in at a little bit of an angle. At this point, I should really put away my solar panels. I don't know why I didn't, but I really should have. There you go. Because I would say that that is anything but a textbook landing. So now we're flipping around. Time warp a little bit just to kind of stop our momentum. 
but uh, we're still very low to the surface. We don't have a lot of room to maneuver with and regain control with. So I'm trying to just tilt myself up so I'm pointed upright. Having some difficulties. Moving farther away from our craft and coming right back down. So instead I try to take some control, fire the engine, get myself pointed the right way. And try to land. And I stop. I get my velocity killed, but I am at an angle that I do not like. And I am not looking forward to where this ship wants to fall. And also, we're really far away. Like, it's not a good position for this to be. And then, so, we think we're ready, and then we start tipping over again. I hit time warp to try to stop it, but uh, we're considered moving over the surface, so no time warp for us. So instead, we just decide to take off again. Um, it wasn't worth it to have this thing land on its side. And we're also taking off in the wrong direction. I wanted to get closer to that ship, not farther. Like I said before, we have plenty of fuel, but we we should be still careful not to be jumping around. This isn't meant to go biome hopping. To be fair, this is the first time Max Das has ever piloted anything this big before, so it's a, it's a struggle. It's a struggle that she's managing and meeting that challenge head on, so... What more can we ask of her? So once again, we just slowly ease our way over so that way we can point more towards the direction that we want to go. I'm going to keep an eye on our little trajectories marker. If you don't have trajectories, I highly recommend it. Um, it's useful in all sorts of situations on with both atmospheric planets and moons. Uh, it's just so useful. MechJab has an option to show you your uh, landing zone, but I don't like it as much as the Trajectories mod. And I don't think it's as accurate as the Trajectories mod is. As uh, always, all the mods that we use for the series will be in a Google Doc listed in the description. So once again, we're coming down. Take two. And it's still not a very great trajectory. And this one's looking a little bit better. We get the warning that we're approaching the surface fairly quickly. Go ahead and fire off and try to kill everything at the last minute. And we do, but it bounces us up a little bit. It's not very encouraging. And not only are we bouncing vertically, but we're also bouncing a little bit horizontally. So I try to kill some of that momentum before we come back down. And once again, we start tipping over. Like, what does it take to land this thing? I thought we were going as slow as curvily possible. So what I decided to do is retract my landing gears. We have a nice square base with these nozzles. Uh, if we end up breaking the engines off, it's not the end of the world because 
I mean, this, this thing isn't really meant to go anywhere else. It can. We have the ability to. We could take off and go elsewhere if we want to with this thing. But for now, this is just its going to be its home. Yeah, so that's not, that's not going to work for us either. Come on, Max Dost, you got this. Swings around trying not to break the engine. And turns it back towards the target. And lifts up once more. And in this uh, attempt, we point it at the target. And then we point ourselves retrograde. We have some height here, so we've got some room to work with. That's the, the most dangerous thing about trying to realign yourself on uh, a moon is not giving yourself enough room to do the maneuver that you need to do. So now I am uh, coming almost perfectly down. You can see our retrograde is just almost at the top. So I go ahead and chase it over a little bit. And now we're not going to be using the landing gears. We're going to just be landing on our engines. So it's even more important that we uh, that we land correctly. Landing gear came out because I accidentally tapped the G button. So I tapped it again to close them. So yeah, so we are coming straight down now. And if this wasn't the flats, if this wasn't like a perfectly flat area, I don't think this mission would have worked. If there was any kind of slope to this, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be able to keep ourselves upright. So it's uh, very fortunate that the Kerbals landed here. And we start to tip over again, so we just hold our position. And we come back down to the surface and we just hold our breath for a second. Can this be it? Is this the one? Have we finally made it? I would say we have. So now, uh, now it's time. So uh, we go ahead and get our scientists out, collects all the science that that little lander has has uh, gathered, and then flies on out and gets ready to get to work. So now we try to get our other scientists out, but apparently we built something in the way that's keeping uh, the door from opening. So we grab all our science, put it into the mobile processing lab, and then we get our engineer out. Because we have two scientists, two pilots, and an engineer right now. So we go ahead and we get the engineer out and we just start taking stuff off the craft that we think are in the way of the door. And we go ahead and EVA our, our uh, scientists. 
Let me transfer them to the MPL as well so that they can get started. Sooner begun, sooner done. So now we gotta... We were trying to put some batteries on the mobile processing lab because I actually didn't put any batteries on it. And then we ended up throwing our spacecraft around a little too much. So instead of trying to put batteries on it, we decided to just take our engineer and uh, get them into the, the rescue craft. We take... Uh, one of the solar panels off the rescue craft uh, and put it onto the mobile processing lab because uh, we had also forgotten to put not just batteries but solar panels on them because we put it on the escape craft we didn't think about it I don't believe that at this point I knew that the escape craft was uh, dead in the water. I was still hoping to get everybody off the surface from it. So I go ahead and take our pilot and get him into the safety of the craft. There we go, we got everybody in there. But uh, I decided to take our engineer um, and we're just gonna keep him in the other craft for now. There's enough life support in both places for everyone to be happy and comfortable. Yep, plenty. So these Kerbals are gonna do some science and then uh, we are going to figure out how to get our pilots back because we actually have every single pilot our agency has is on this planet right now so in the next episode we're gonna rescue these guys but anyways that is where I'm gonna leave today's episode thank you so much for watching I hope you enjoyed it I hope you've been enjoying this series if you did please consider giving me a like drop me a comment let me know what you're thinking and I will see you all in the next one take care